We're about to enter what is usually the busiest home buying and selling season as we enter the spring. And so far in 2024, the housing market has actually been pretty hot. Prices are up 5% year over year, and we're starting to see some increases in inventory, which is encouraging. But as you all probably know, there are a lot of headwinds facing the housing market and the broader economy. And the question is, will this hot housing market continue or will we start to see prices start to soften? In this video, I'm gonna provide an update on the current state of the housing market. We're gonna talk about mortgage rates and where they're going. We'll talk about housing prices and inventory and what you as an investor or a prospective home buyer should be thinking about for the 2024 housing market. But before we get into today's video, let me ask you, do you want to dive deep into commercial real estate, entrepreneurship, leadership, and the economy? If you do, tune into the Walker webcast. It's hosted by Willie Walker, the CEO of Walker & Dunlop, one of the largest commercial real estate finance and advisory firms in the country. As one of the top 1.5% of podcasts globally and with over 10 million views, the Walker webcast brings together Brilliant minds from broad and varied backgrounds. You can fire up the Walker webcast on your favorite podcast app, join live on Wednesdays, or catch the replay on demand. And it's more than just commercial real estate, you'll get insights for really your entire life. So subscribe now to the Walker webcast at walkerdunlop.com slash pockets. All right, so let's just get start with a bit of a summary of where we are in the housing market, at least in terms of pricing. As I said earlier, we're almost up 5% year over year. It's actually 4.7%. And it's important to note that even though this is well below where growth rates were in 2020 or 2021, this is above the average, the long-term average for home price. So we're actually seeing a strong year for residential housing market. But the question is, can this be sustained? And there are a lot of headwinds, but the primary headwind that's facing the housing market, we all know, is affordability. Affordability, uh, you probably know what it means, but in housing, it has a very specific definition, which is how easily the average American can afford the average price home in the US. And it's been low for the last year or two, but recently, just in the last couple of weeks, it has actually reached its worst point in 40 plus years, meaning that for the average American, it is harder to afford just a regular home than it has been since the early 1980s. This comes from a variety of things, but the primary reasons are one, mortgage rates have shot back up over the last couple of weeks, but at the same time, prices are still growing. And so the combination of those two things, high prices and really high mortgage rates, means that affordability is low. So one of the ways that I like to look at affordability is how much the average mortgage payment is per month. So if you just went out and bought the median priced home in the US, what would you pay be paying every single month for your mortgage? The answer is $2,775. And that is up 11% just from last year. And remember, rates were already high last year. So it's even higher than that. And it's way higher than what it was during the pandemic. Back in 2021, it was about $1,700. So it's almost $1,100 more than it was just three years ago. So obviously, you can extrapolate this out and see how this is going to pull demand out of the housing market because fewer and fewer people can afford it. And again, there are many ways to measure demand, but one way I like to look at it is Redfin actually produces something called the Redfin Home Buyer Index. And this measures a couple of different things, but you know they have this platform where people are going on and looking at homes and requesting tours, and they create this index of how much demand there is. And it's down 11% year over year and at one of the lowest points it's been since the pandemic started. So the question is, will demand continue to decline and leave the market? And for that, we have to look at the future of mortgage rates. Now, we obviously don't know where mortgage rates are going to go for sure, but we can just, let me just fill you in on what's happening right now. So rates had fallen to about 7% earlier in the year because the Fed had announced that they were likely going to cut rates in 2024. The bond market liked that. It went, bond yields went down and that led to lower mortgage rates. 
Since then, in just the last like two months or so, there has been a lot of data that has come out that suggests that inflation is just still too high. We see that in the CPE, we see that in the PCE, and there's just all sorts of evidence. And this has led the market to believe that the Fed is less likely to cut rates and it has sent bond yields soaring and that has pulled mortgage rates up with them. Now, the Fed has signaled that they are still likely to cut interest rates this year, but that does not mean that mortgage rates are going to come down that much. As we talk about a lot on this channel, but let me remind you all, the Fed does not control mortgage rates. They influence bond yields and bond yields influence mortgage rates. So they do sort of in a way influence mortgage rates, but it's not directly. It's sort of this secondary or even tertiary influence on mortgage rates. I personally believe that rates will start to come down a little bit, but we're still going to be in the mid sixes, maybe even the high sixes throughout the rest of this year. And so in, when we're talking about demand, if rates do come down below that 7% mark, and I kind of think people just have this like psychological aversion to anything over 7%. I think if it comes down maybe below 7% on an average, we will see a little bit of a tick up in demand, but nothing crazy. We're not going to all of a sudden start to see people rushing into the housing market. So that's sort of how I see demand right now. It's going to be relatively slow. It might pick up a little bit if mortgage rates get better. But obviously, if we want to forecast where prices are going to go through the rest of the year, we can't just look at the demand side. We also have to look at supply. In the housing market, when we talk about supply, there are a couple metrics, but the ones I'm going to show you today are active listings, which is a measurement of how many properties are for sale at any given time, and new listings, which is how many individual people decide to put a property up for sale. And they're slightly different, and we'll get into that, but both really important. First things first, active listings, they are up 10% year over year, which is really important because one of the primary dynamics of the housing market over the last few years has been that there's not enough supply for demand, and that has kept active listings really low, right? Even if a lot of people were listing their properties, they were bought so quickly that if you went and looked for properties at any given point, there wouldn't be a lot of them. And this increase in active listings 10% year over year does suggest that supply and demand dynamics are starting to shift. Next, let's look at new listings. And if you watch this channel, you probably know that I have said that new listings, for me, this is like the metric of 2024. That is as nerdy as it gets to have a metric to watch. But for me, this is the one that I think is going to be most important in 2024 because we've seen for the last year or two that not a lot of people are listing their houses for sale. There's reasons like the lock-in effect. People are just been staying in their houses longer. That happened started even before the pandemic. Pandemic. There's all sorts of reasons for this, but for the market to fundamentally shift, I believe new listings have to go up. And that's exactly what we're seeing. New listings are up 14% year over year, which is a pretty healthy clip. And I can really only speculate as to why that's happening, but my guess is that people are just getting used to higher mortgage rates and life happens, right? Like maybe people wanted to sell their home last year and they thought, oh, I'll wait until mortgage rates come down, but maybe they've just accepted that rates aren't gonna come down that much or no one really knows when rates are going to come down. And so instead they're gonna list their house like they were originally intending because prices have stayed high anyway. And so they could probably still fetch a good price. When you look at all these dynamics combined, it paints a picture of a slowly shifting housing market. It's not changing really quickly, but we're starting to see demand come down. And at the same time, supply is come going up. And that can lead to better balance because we are still skewed very far in one direction. Since the pandemic started four years ago, we've been in this dynamic where there are too many buyers for the amount of homes for sale. And that's why prices keep going up and you never see anything on the MLS. That is slowly starting to shift. And I do think it's going to continue. Trends right now suggest that we probably will see softer pricing heading into the summer. That's just how economics works, right? If demand is going down and supply is starting to go up, pricing is going to be softer. Now, I don't know if that means that they're going to turn negative or we're going to see somewhat of a correction. And to be clear, I am not saying that I think there is going to be a crash anytime soon. I have been saying for years, I don't think that there is a housing crash imminent. And I 
still think that. But I think prices could get closer to flat in many markets. And in some markets, they may turn modestly negative. And of course, all the data that I've been sharing in this video so far is all national. And really, if you want to understand what's going on and make a decision about your own life, you need to look at how these trends and how these metrics are shaping up in your local market. You can do that on Redfin or there's a lot of other websites that provide similar data to what I've shown you here for your local market. So go look at demand, go look at active listings, go look at new listings in your market to understand, you know, is supply going up? Is it going down? Is demand going up? Is it going down? And that will help you make decisions about one, whether you should be jumping into the market right now. And two, if you're gonna jump into the market, how aggressive you have to be on your offers or how willing a seller might be to negotiate. That's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully this update on the housing market is useful to you as we enter the busy season of 2024. Thank you all so much for watching. See you guys soon.